I think a lot of people think that, that, that the sound you hear on screen was recorded on the set during the filming. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I take that as a no. Um, so, I mean, how, how, much, how much sound did you have when you inherited the film? Well, um, there was, when I inherited the film, there was sound for everything. But effectively, it's a placeholder. Now, the, the clip that you just saw, if you can replay the sound in your mind's ear, is 100% fabricated. There's not a single piece of production. There was nothing that you saw and heard was recorded when that, those, those shots and scenes were originally photographed. Um, and so I don't think that's well understood. And yet part of our goal is for you never to question it. The, to, one of the reasons we're so invisible is that because we have to be invisible. We have to create this fabricated reality that allows you to suspend disbelief so that you can say, oh yeah, that's what a war rig would sound like. Oh yeah, that's what a big sandstorm would sound like. So we trick you into believing those sounds really existed, but we have to go in piecemeal, record, design, fabricate, edit, mix, all of those things to create this sort of immersive reality that becomes the soundtrack to the movie. Well, also, I, I thought I was very smart because I thought there must be at least like 20 channels you're working with because there's, <laughs> exactly, exactly, cause there, cause there's music, there's dialogue, there's the, the ambient yeah. sound, there's yeah. the, the crowd noises. But mm -hmm. I mean, how many channels are you working with on a movie like Mad Max? In the big chase at the end of the movie, we maxed out the largest mixing console in North America, maybe the largest in the world, at 2,048 channels of audio. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And now, hold on a second. I'm not, this is not bragging rights. There's nothing, I, I don't take any kind of professional pride in I have more tracks than you do. Um, <laughs> this just happened to be a particularly dense movie, as you can see in a big chase film like this. At any given moment, there are hundreds of things happening sonically that you could hear. And so very often our job is to prepare for any eventuality. Should George Miller have wanted to hear the rattling of that little metal chain that's hanging from the visor of that particular vehicle, I have to be ready to provide it if necessary. But the key to great sound is having 2,048 channels and knowing what to actually use. It's all about sonic focus. And so it's figuring out, I want to use just these one or two sounds at any given moment. And of course, the lack of sound is a choice. And it, 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 it's not laziness. I mean, there are lovely moments of quiet in this film where we thought, we don't need sound any longer. There's, a, there's, a, there's a several great moments about an hour in where a Furiosa is driving in the desert and Mac, she's talking to Max and she's talking about the green space and her upbringing and her childhood. And it's a very personal and interior moment but she's still driving a giant diesel truck. But we made the choice to remove all of that sound because it's an interior moment. We, we wanted to immerse the audience in her story, not in the sounds that really are peripheral to what's going on on the screen. Again, that's another kind of secret to good sound design is knowing when and how sound supports your, your story.